Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. home is four to five years old and they did a great job of building this huge master closet in fact I've been known to go and hide in there like there's a chair in there I can sit the size is wonderful however there are just wire you know hangers right now it does need a bit of an upgrade all over but a solution that I've done on my side is add like a big piece of Ikea furniture I've been looking for another one for my husband so that he can put everything he needs to fold um, in one spot. And I finally found this piece of furniture. It is huge. It was at the thrift store. It was listed at $150. All furniture, it was 50% off. And I used my 25% off coupon. So I think I ended up spending around $56 for this huge piece of furniture. I had to borrow my, my dad's truck because it would not fit in the back of my navigator. That's how massive it is. And decided it's time to cozy up my master closet. My new booth is full. It is selling things, but it's still like overloaded with stuff. So I feel like I have the ability to work on some stuff around my home. So if you wanna see how I update this huge dresser, stick around. So here is a reminder of what this bad boy looked like at the thrift store. When I got it home, I did a little once over and sanded off as much as I could of the particle board that was coming off and just the top level injuries. But you can see that there are these incredible gouges in the top. So what I did is I mixed to get together some Durham um, wood putty and I forgot to read the instructions because here I am trying to hold it with the camera, you know, my phone in one hand and it's way too watery, but I just kept adding more powder until the consistency was right. And I filled in the gouges and then went back over with the orbital sander. Did not catch that part on video, but you can see in my next shot that I had sanded all of the putty down and there was raw wood so i wanted to go over this thing with salvation solution from diy um, it basically levels out the surface so the paint will hit it all evenly and if there was any bleed through with the wood which there was not with this piece but that would protect the tannins from coming through to the paint so I decided to use the color Weathered Wood, which I had never used before. I had seen plenty of people use it. I did two solid coats on top of this piece with Weathered Wood. It is such a nice, how do I describe this color? Like Weathered Wood? Very, very dark brown, blacky type color. I'm, I'm really loving the, the finish of this. Um, I'm using the multitasker brush from DIY paint. I love these brushes. It, it holds so much paint and I am very happy with it. So you can see this is the first coat and I'm just using my water mister that I got from Hobby Lobby and spraying it beforehand, putting some paint over the top and then spraying it again. And it really does a great job of letting this clay based paint just glide over the top. It's not goopy. It just makes this nice clay based paint very smooth and it allows for this beautiful finish on the top. Don't forget to get one of those misters, guys. It changes smalls, it changes furniture. I mean, just look at the brush, just glides over it and you can control what the top coat looks like. After that, I am going to go over this with clear wax. You can see there's a gouge on the side, but I know where this piece is going. I did not put any putty on there. I just worried about the, the stuff that you could see. 
This is just clear wax going over it. And then I used DIY's White Swan just so that there's a nice white base over the part that I'm going to do decoupage paper. Now, if I didn't want any of the brush strokes to go through, I should have done two coats. I just did one coat. Some of the brush strokes came through, but because of the paper I chose, I kind of like the look of that. So I am completely fine with that. You'll see in the next shot just what it looks like all set up. I put all the drawers in here so that I could see how I wanted each part of the paper to kind of be a star. The decoupage paper I'm using today is JRV's black and white floral and it is Henry just climbed all over this it is 30 by 20 and I ended up using four of these because of the size of my drawers and I have plenty left over now the one I actually used I think was just a variation of this and was a limited re release from JRV and it's more of a gray color but this one is black and white while the one I used just had a little bit more of a gray to it. So you could get the same look by buying the black and white floral paper from JRV. I took each drawer out separately. I creased where I wanted to cut the paper and allowed for the edges to go over the side so that I could sand the edges down once the liquid patina had dried. But basically this is how I decided what part of the paper I wanted to use. Then I brought the drawer in, put down the liquid patina. You guys suggested to use a ball of saran wrap and I do not know why I waited so long to try this trick, guys. I used the saran wrap to get the bubbles out and what have I been thinking? It made it so easy, such a cheap craft supply to have in your stash and it really does just get all the air bubbles out it gets the creases out there's no pulling on the paper um, I did before I got the saran wrap out I did use my fingers and I had a little injury but I will show you later in this video how I solved that problem The next step that I'm doing is just using some sandpaper to kind of just cut a straight edge, so to speak. And the ridge of this drawer is helping me make that straight edge. I tried 220 grit sandpaper and that was not enough. I think I went to the 80 grit route, which I probably could have met in the middle. Another trick for this step is you absolutely need to make sure that the paper in the liquid patina or whatever decoupage medium that you use is completely dry before you try sanding. If you try to do it beforehand, it will rip your paper not in a straight line. 
So take it from me, wait until everything is completely dry and then sand the edges for this nice clean look. In the next clip here, I am showing you that there was an injury. Do you see that little spot that kind of rubbed off? So I am not cutting because I'm ripping so that it is not like a clean little square that I'm putting on there. I'm ripping the edges of another piece of the paper that has a similar look. And then I am putting the decoupage medium on top of it. Again, I'm using DIY's Liquid Patina, my favorite new, my new favorite decoupage medium. But I'm just kind of doing patchwork right here. This is near where a handle will be, but it's not directly underneath it. So I did want to make sure that I solved this problem. And you will notice when the whole project is done, you cannot tell where this patchwork happened. So this is a nice, easy way to kind of correct any mistakes it is glue and paper and you can just patchwork where your mistakes are after the decoupage paper is completely dry i go over the edges with the clear wax and then i buff it with a shop rag that doesn't have any lint attached to it and i reattach the same hardware that came with the piece I'm really liking how it kind of breaks up the paper and I am completely happy with this one So what did you think of today's project? I know that doing these huge pieces of furniture are not in everyone's wheelhouse or desire, but to be able to find something that is going to make our quality of living in the master closet and sharing a closet, if you know what I mean, um, much better than $56 is a small investment when you even compare it to going and getting like a mass produced piece like from Ikea. What a treasure this little piece is gonna be in there. My husband said it was okay if I made it girly, so I painted it, 
that dark color and added some floral. He just said, make it sellable. So if we ever want to put it in your booth, we can. So I figured this was a nice like middle ground. Let me know in the comments below, was it too much of the paper? My oldest said, hmm, it's something when she first saw it. But I think once I finally got the edges off and the hardware on, it definitely had a more finished look and it wasn't so in your face with all the floral. Let me know in the comments below if you got inspired to do something of your own. Remember, you can do this on like a little end table. Um, you can put this on smalls. Like that is a fun, fun thing that even if you're not upcycling or trying to sell furniture, you can still use these same techniques on the stuff that you have around your home. If you enjoyed my content, I would love it if you would join my Create Your Own Cozy family and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to all so you get notified every time I upload a new video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what you are crushing this week. Don't forget to celebrate. Even if, hey, I got out of bed, I took a shower, I am crushing today. Don't forget to celebrate that. I am in the middle of the summer with my kiddos where Listen, I'm just trying to enjoy every minute. My oldest is 13. I have an 11 year old um, and a nine year old. I know that these summers are going to be gone before I know it. So I'm trying to enjoy even the little mundane things. Like we ran errands the other day and we had a blast. So that is what I am crushing right now. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you like, not necessarily for you. I would love to hear from you. And guys, I hope you are having a great summer full of some fun memories. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.